Hey friends, welcome back to the Hooligan Knitter Podcast. As always, I am your host and resident Hooligan Sierra, and this is my little podcast where I talk about my knitting on the internet, and sometimes people watch, and that's fun. Um, let's see, today I have five finished objects to chat about, uh, only four to show because one of them uh, was a gift, and I started and finished it since last time, but I do have a couple of pictures, and if I can figured out I will put those in um yeah so grab yourself a, a little bevy I am drinking my usual coffee with chocolate milk and let's talk about some knitting all right let's see since last time I guess we'll start with the things that we've seen I finished my mini mock neck. She's been folded, so she's a little creased, but she has been blocked. The lighting in here is terrible and not doing her any justice. Um, but I just wanna show off for a second. I think I did such a good job picking up the stitches for the neckline. I just think it looks really nice. Um, and I've knit this pattern before. Earlier this year, I knit, um, like a burgundy, maroony kind of color mini mock neck. Um, and it's fine. The neckline is fine. But now looking at this one, I've definitely improved at picking up stitches. So that was kind of cool to see. Um, I made no modifications to this pattern other than lengthening it. So it is full length. Um, did I do anything else? Oh, I did, um, the twin stitches that the Fish Lips Kiss heel calls for in that pattern instead of the whatever it calls for in this pattern, probably German Short Rows. Um, and then I didn't count the stitches when I was picking up the neckline. Does, do, do people do that? I don't do that. Um, also... Look how nice my shoulder pickup was. Look at that, like right through here. Wow, professional knitter over here, guys. I haven't worn this yet because it is 100% merino and I am expecting this to pill um, the second it is on my body and I wanted to keep it looking somewhat nice so she could have her moment on camera. Um, but now I will definitely be using her as a layering piece. Um, I just, I think it's going to be perfect for this time of year. Very happy she's done. I will definitely be knitting more mini mock necks. It's just, it's an easy pattern. I like the way that it fits. Um, it's a good, you know, basic wardrobe staple. Yeah. But very happy that's done and excited to add it to my wardrobe. All right, what else have we finished? Um, I'm calling these finished. I have to weave in um, like one more end, but I'm calling it finished. These are the socks I knit for my mother. Again, the lighting is not doing us any favors. Um, yeah, I didn't follow a pattern for these. I just cast on a pair of vanilla toe up um, ribbed socks. I did 50, 56 stitches. Is that right? Maybe 52. I don't remember. And then the yarn is Malabrigo Ultimate Sock in the color Sabaduria which is this really nice purple that the camera just doesn't want to pick up. But they're done. There are two of them. Um, Fish Lips Kiss Heel. Didn't do ribbing on the bottom. Did ribbing all the way around the leg. And yeah, I just have to weave in um, where I joined in the second ball of yarn. And then these are like actually officially done. And I hope they fit my mom 
and if they don't, she better just lie to me and tell me that they do. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. what else? Malabrigo Ultimate Sock has a fingering weight yarn. I held it double to get a DK sock. She specifically requested some thick, squishy socks to wear to my brother's high school football games. Um, so that's what we did. And I think that's all I have to say about these. All right, this is the last thing that I've shown before, and I'm a little annoyed. Um, but I finished the cashmere scarf for my grandmother. It is, oh my God, there is a squirrel about to jump in my bird feeder. Side note, bird people, um, if y'all have any tips for keeping squirrels out of your bird feeders, you little asshole. Wow. That's upsetting. Um, okay, cashmere scarf. She's done. She ended up pretty long. Um, I'm annoyed because I ran out of yarn. Very close to the end. And I was simply not going to buy another ball of 100% cashmere to finish the last couple of rows on a garter stitch scarf. Not doing that. Um, Maybe some people out there would have, not me. So this end is just like a little bit more blunt than the starting edge. And I really, I don't know how this happened. This has happened to me on another triangular garter stitch saw with increases on one end. Um, I weigh the ball of yarn as I'm going and I even gave myself an extra gram of, like, grace yarn. So, I don't know what's happening. Am I really just that terrible at math? I don't think I am. I might be. But this is the second time it's happened to me on a pattern like this. And, I don't know, maybe I just need to leave myself more yarn for the second half than I expect that I need? I don't know. I'm annoyed, but it's done. Um, I am gonna block this because I'm just curious. Uh, it's already very soft and drapey, right? It's cashmere. Um, but I'm curious to see how much softer it would get if I blocked it. So we're gonna do that and see what happens. Um, this yarn, I don't think I have the ball band for it anymore, but is this is Pasquale Cashmere. If I can find it, I will put it in the description box. Um, should I put it on? My hair in a ponytail, I'm not sure this is the vibe, but. But just a little scarf, little guy. God, that fat squirrel sitting in my bird feeder is just so annoying. <laughs> But anyway, so I figure my grandma can wear it like this, or if she wants to, she can wear it in her hair. Um, she has similar coloring um, to me, so I think that it would look really pretty on her. Also, this shirt. Sorry, I'm all over the place today. My stepmom had this shirt made for me. It has Mac on it, my cat. It says, I do what I want, Mac. And he's knocking a glass of something over. <laughs> Um, so that's fun. Anyway, that was my triangular garter stitch tall with increases on one end and decreases on the other. Um, I increased every 12th row and then on the other side I decreased every 12th row. That's all I got. What size needle did I nip that on? I think a US 4, which is a 3.5 millimeter. I'm getting good at that. I'm getting good at like switching between US and millimeter sizes. All right, and then my other two finished objects you have not seen. Um, if I can figure out how, I will put a picture in of the shawl that I knit here. And if I can't figure out how to do that, then I'm just gonna talk about it. Um, I knit a bulky weight boneyard shawl by Stephen West. 
My coworker and friend Nick requested a shawl for him to wear. Um, we both work from home and he and his wife keep their house kind of chilly. Um, so he requested like a nice shawl to wrap up in and he really likes my boneyard shawl. Um, I just keep this draped over my office chair because I use it all the time. Um, so I had him try mine on, see how he liked it. Um, he requested that it be a little bit deeper than mine. Um, and then also a heavier weight fabric. So we took a little field trip to Michael's and he picked out about 500 grams of bulky weight, um, like acrylic yarn in various shades of greens. He's a green boy. Um, and then I got some yarn on top of that as like payment and I knit an entire shawl, um, an entire 500 gram um, shawl in less than a week. No, that can't be right. Less than two weeks. Um, he loves it. He, it ended up, um, bigger than mine. It ended up, um, heavier weight, obviously. And I got a good picture of him, like, swaddled up in it on my couch when he was out here visiting. Um, so I think that was a win. Um, I didn't really enjoy knitting it because I don't love knitting with acrylic, especially not like bulky weight acrylic yarn. Um, but he picked some really good colors, so that kind of kept me going. And yeah, I'm happy that I was able to finish that pretty quickly and give that to him. And now we both have nice cozy shawls to wear in our home office. Um, okay, last finished object I will chat about is just a hat. Um, I have recently become aware of and in love with Holstgarn Cielo, which, is this the ball band for this one? It is. Um, it is 42% alpaca, 42% fine merino, and 16% polyamide. Um, it is delightfully soft and warm. And this is the second hat that I have now made out of that yarn. Um, this is the color Ash. It's showing up kind of bluish. It's, it's not blue. It's like a true, like, heathered gray. I don't know. We gotta figure out something with the lighting. Um, did I follow a pattern for this? Sort of? Not really? Kind of? I cast on, <clears throat> cast on seven, seventy? Yeah, 70 stitches. I did about four inches of one by one rib. And then I increased to 80 stitches because stockinette isn't quite as stretchy. Um, did that for a while. And then I did the decreases from the Parkside hat by Layla Raven, which I actually have sitting over here because I was wearing it. Because I just think the decreases are beautiful. They're very clean, they're very easy. Um, and yeah, this hat is not for me. This hat is actually for my husband's family's gift exchange. Every year we each um, buy a present that we bring to family Christmas and then we all sit in a big circle and we read a story and there's words in the story that you mean you pass the present in your lap to the right or the left. Uh, and then, so you don't get your own gift, hopefully. So I figured I would put a nice handmade, high quality hat in the gift that we bring. And yeah, I am a little concerned that it's a little small. Um, I made Hunter try it on and he, he can get it on his head. He said it's a little snug. So what we're going to do is we're gonna block this hat. Um, I don't usually block my hats unless they are color work or cables because generally 
it's a hat. You're going to wear it on your head. The heat from your head is going to essentially block it for you and like mold it to the shape of your head. That's what I've found in my experience. Um, but I am concerned that this is not going to fit comfortably on everyone. And because this is 42% alpaca, I think this will grow when I wash it. Hopefully not a ton. If it does, I'll put it in the dryer. Don't come for me. Um, but the reason I bought this yarn and knit this hat in stockinette, instead of doing an all over ribbed hat, which might've been a safer option for a gift, is I'm using this as a swatch. Um, I pulled the trigger and bought a sweater quantity of Holskarn Cielo that I will show you. We're going to do an unboxing because I haven't opened the package yet. Um, but I'm going to knit a sweater out of it. And we all know I don't swatch. Um, so this is my swatch. <laughs> I know what needle size I use. I used a US 10, which is... Six millimeter? Is that right? I might be lying. Don't listen to me. Um, so we're going to block this. We're going to measure it and cast on a sweater. But yeah, hat. Just a basic hat. Um, hopefully whoever gets it for Christmas will love it. I chose a nice neutral gray for them. Um, seems like a safe option. And who doesn't love a nice warm hand knit hat? I did not think about it being 42%. Is it really 42? Yeah. 42% alpaca until I was done with the hat. And then I remember that some people are sensitive to alpaca. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, I don't know. I think it'll be fine. This feels so soft to me, but I also really love alpaca. And Hunter didn't mention that it was itchy. <sighs> Maybe this wasn't the best idea. Whatever, it's done. They're gonna get it. You get what you get and you don't throw a fit. Okay. Those are all my finished objects. Hopefully I was able to put a picture in of Nick Shaw. Um, as far as works in progress, I feel like I have more to show you than just these two. I guess I don't. Oh, I also forgot to update my whip list. <gasps> Guys, I only have five whips right now. That's pretty cool. Bear with me. I'm just updating my whip list because I will forget to do it. Okay. Um, I only have five whips. I have currently on my needles the two that I'm going to show you. I have my Emery pullover, which is an all over cabled sweater that I pick up and do a couple of rows on here and there. I have a Tolsta tank that I'm knitting in Co. Nope, True Boo from Lion Brands, but I'm not going to get anywhere of it anytime soon. Wear out of it anytime soon. So it's just kind of on the back burner for now. Um, and then. Oh, I have a bookshop cardigan by Hook Mountain Handmade on my needles that I haven't touched in months. Um, I do want it. I just haven't felt like working on it. Um, <clears throat> so there's a little mini update on my other three whips. These two things, again, we'll start with the one that I have shown you before. Maybe. Oh my god, it's all tangled up. Oh no. Okay. I started a bright red Dear Duomo by Sung Hee Hong, which if you've been here before, you know I love that pattern. Um, it's just a super basic bottom up drop shoulder sweater. Um, it has some body shaping that I don't do. Um, and it has some really nice shoulder shaping that I do include. Um, and I just decided that I needed a bright red one. This is looking way more orange on camera. It is much more of like a true, like bright Christmas red. Um, 
you're just gonna have to believe me um I haven't done a ton of work on this I've finished the ribbing and I'm just working a stockinette I want this to be like a full length cozy sweater um so I'm going to knit the body to about 12 and a half inches I think which is a little longer than full length for me but I don't know I just want like a really long cozy sweater so ribbing is done it's on too small of a needle but I'm working on my stockinette and yeah clearly I've been focusing on other things um, that are now finished so I think I will start focusing on this a little bit more my kind of delulu plan was to have this done for Christmas it is November 10th I don't know if that's gonna happen I'm certainly not going to like put a deadline and stress myself out about it but I think it would be really nice to have a bright red cozy sweater for Christmas will it happen who knows we'll see stay tuned um I am knitting this this is just acrylic from Michaels. I know I just said that I don't like knitting with acrylic um, and it's certainly not my preference, but um, it's accessible, it's easy to care for, and it comes in every color you can imagine. So we got this, I think I got the yarn for the sweater for 20, 25 bucks or something. Um, do I have a ball band? I'm pretty sure it's just loops and threads. Is this it? No. Maybe I don't have a ball band. Um, but I'm pretty sure it's just loops and threads in the color Scarlet. Just a worsted weight acrylic, nothing special. Um, but I think it'll be a really nice sweater. We'll see. And then the last whip that I have for now, because I will be casting something on, maybe today, we'll see how ambitious I get. This has been something that I have been really loving working on. I have had my eye on this pattern for so long and I finally just decided to do it. Um, I started a Humlebee shawl by Fiber Tails. It's the one with the bees on it. And it's interesting because this shawl is knit bottom up. So you cast on about a million stitches and then you decrease up towards the top. And I'm gonna show you my bees because I think they're so cute. Obviously this hasn't been blocked yet, but there are little, little guys. They're little guys. And then there's a little bit of lace above the little guys. There's some um, garter stitch and like a zigzag underneath the little guys. And I think it's so cute. Um, the rest of the shawl is just garter stitch. So it's going to be super squishy and nice. And I'm really excited. The center spine has um, center double decreases. So it just makes this really nice clean line of um, knit stitches down the center. And I've just been really, really enjoying working on this shawl. Um, let's talk about the pattern first and then we'll talk about the yarn. So the pattern, like I said, it's the Humla Bee Shawl by Fiber Tails. Um, I'm not sure how great the pattern is my stitch count was off at one point which has led to the bees on this half of the shawl being a little wonky um, I think you can still tell that they're bees but the wing on one side is like a little off <laughs> I don't know if you can see like they're just a little bit off you know um, and then after I did the bees and realized something's not right here, 
um, I counted my million and seven stitches and realized I was off. Um, my shawl was lopsided. I had more stitches on the side that looks correct than on the wonky side. <clears throat> so I just used my noggin a little bit and um, didn't do a decrease on this side, a couple of decreases on this side and kept decreasing on this side. And now everything's fine. I have the right number of stitches. It's all good. And at first I was like, you know, it is what it is. Um, I probably just didn't cast on the correct number of stitches because you do have to cast on so many, so many stitches. Um, I don't remember the exact number, but I it's like over 300, close to 400 stitches. Um, so like you've got all of this, then like it's gonna be a big shawl, hopefully. <clears throat> And I was first, I was like, okay, I probably just cast on the wrong number of stitches. It is what it is. I fixed it. Let's move forward. Um, but then I was reading some of the comments on Ravelry and other people also had stitch counts be off. So I will admit that I am not the best mathematician in the world, but it seems... Like, this was not just a me issue. Which is a little upsetting, because this is not a free pattern. And multiple people have had this issue with the pattern. Um, and it has not been fixed, clearly. So, I don't know that I would recommend this pattern. However, if you have some, you know, brain cells in your noggin, I think you can totally do it. Um, and if you don't mind your bees looking a little wonky, it's fine. I mean, they're still, I mean, they're recognizably bees, right? And if anyone can tell that your bee wings are a stitch or two off, they're probably too close to you. Um, it's like curling up a little bit. This thing is hard to manage. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they're just like a stitch off. But I think it's fine. I'm definitely not going back. There's way too many stitches. I've gone too far. It is what it is. It's a handmade shawl. It's not going to be perfect. Um, okay, and the yarn. I really thought I kept a ball band, but I guess I didn't. This is Lion Brand. It is 100% wool. It does smell like a sheep. It is a single ply. I don't know if that focused at all. Um, single ply, 100% wool from Lion Brand. I don't remember the name of the base. I'm sorry. I also don't remember the name of the color. <sighs> ah, sorry, I'm a terrible podcaster. Um, but this yarn has truly been a delight to work with. I will see if I can find the name of the base and the color so I can put it in the description box because... I'm like having a great time with this yarn. Um, it comes in 100 gram balls. <sighs> it's worsted weight. Um, and I want to say it was like eight or nine bucks a ball for 100 grams of 100% wool. So I'm really hoping that Lion Brand doesn't do the thing that they really like to do where they introduce a new base and it's amazing and lovely and wonderful. And then they decide to stop making it. Because this is a thing that Lion Brand does. And it's upsetting. But they've done this with some of my favorites from them. Um, and that's just sad. But if you can get your, hold, get your hands on this and get a hold of it, I do really recommend this yarn. Obviously I can't speak to how it wears over time and it is a single ply. So it's probably going to pill if you wear it like as a garment. Um, but I think for a shawl, it's going to be fine. Um, I think this would be really beautiful held with a mohair. Uh, yeah. Love this yarn. 
could definitely see myself using it again. Um, that's all I got. So, I am expecting there to be some good progress on this for next time because the yarn is so nice. I'm having a great time. Now that I've finished, like, the fun, intriguing part, it's just garter stitch back and forth for forever. Um, oh, and I think it's just going to be so nice. <laughs> I'm very, very excited about the shawl. I'm becoming a shawl person. All right, so those are my FOs and my whips. And some of the yarn for some of those was um, recently purchased. So I guess those were some of my acquisitions as well. But I do also have two other acquisitions to show off, little show and tell. We'll start with this one. So the Yarnery, one of my favorite local yarn stores, um, recently moved locations and they had their grand reopening for their new location last weekend. And so I had to stop by, of course. And I got a skein of Mondim, which is sock yarn. It is pretty sure just 100%. Yeah, Portuguese wool, 100 grams, 421 yards. I have knit socks out of Mondim before and I love them. I have nothing else to say other than I really love those socks. They are thick and squishy and warm and they're the socks that I gravitate towards the most. You know, when I look outside and it's gloomy and raining and dark and depressing, those are the socks that I want on my feet. And so I thought it was worth it to pick up another skein of Mondim to make more cozy, lovely socks. Um, this is the color 204. And I realized after I bought it that it's just the pansexual pride flag colors, which, okay, fitting, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's like a cream base with hot pink and yellow and blue. And I'm really interested to see how this is going to knit up. Is it going to stripe? Is it going to, I don't know, what is it going to do? We'll find out. Um, my plan for this is probably just some more DRK Everyday Socks, um, which is a toe-up all-over 2x2 rib sock with a legal heel. Um, yeah, I really like those socks. I've knit two pairs of them, and they're great. So I think another pair is in my future, and I'll probably have leftovers. So maybe I'll make two pairs of Mondim socks. We'll see. We'll see how much I have left. And then I thought we could do a little unboxing together. Make sure I'm not showing the internet my address. So I did cut the box open, but I have not opened the contents. And I know what this is, so I don't know. This is just my packing slip. Cool. All right. Got a sweater quantity of more whole scorn cielo, like I said, and this is the color Cosmos. And obviously the lighting is terrible, but it's this really nice dark navy blue. And I'm not usually a blue person. Usually I very much gravitate towards um, warm tones and neutrals. That's kind of my color palette. But I just, I thought that this was nice. <laughs> my plan for this is the Winter's Sweater by Ozetta, which is this enormous hug of a sweater with a big folded over turtleneck. It's oversized, it's long. And I just think it's going to be so cozy in this yarn. I had a vision in my noggin and I, it's been living in my head rent free since. And do I have other sweater quantities of yarn that I told myself I was going to knit up first? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but you know, sometimes you just, 
you just gotta. So I bought eight balls of this. Um, according to my math, which again, don't trust me that much on math. Um, I need 10 balls of this for the size I'm going to knit, but the yarnery only had eight balls. So we're gonna see, okay, that was a good catch. We're gonna see how far I get with eight balls of yarn. And if I need more, I'll just order more. It's not a big deal. Um, and I know all of you are screaming about dye lot and it's fine. If the bottom of my sweater is a slightly different color, it is what it is. It wouldn't be the first time. Um, but yeah. Big ol' bag of woolly goodies. That I'm very excited to play with. So, the game plan for today is to block this hat so that I can measure my gauge. Look at me, I'm learning. Um, we're gonna measure my gauge with this hat and see if I can't cast on that sweater soon. Um, I am also going to be casting on another pair of DK weight socks. So by next time that we chat, I will probably have some DK weight socks on the needles again and probably a new sweater. Do I need another sweater on my needles? No. But my soul needs another sweater on the needles. So that's what we're gonna do. Other than that, um, life has been busy. We were in La Crosse, Wisconsin yesterday, hanging out with one of my husband's friends and his wife, who we have finally gotten the opportunity to meet. So it was very lovely to hang out with them. We went out to eat and then wandered around a mall. We went to an arcade. It was very fun. Um, last weekend, what did we do last weekend? I feel like we did something last weekend too. I don't know. It's been busy. Um, Pepper has now caught not one, but two mice in my house. So that's something we're not thrilled about. Um, the first mouse she, she did kill and left it in my craft room. So thank you, Pepper. Um, the second one was actually just this morning. Um, I woke up and I could hear her in my bedroom just losing her little mind and I was like oh she's playing with her sloth toy she has a little like plush sloth toy that she loves it crinkles it's her favorite toy um and then I rolled over and saw a mouse who ran across my floor <laughs> so we did rescue that one from Pepper um we, we did throw that one back outside um but yeah, the Michalowski household is having a great time. Pepper especially is having a great time. She's having the time of her life. Other than that, what are you working on? Tell me, I'm nosy and I love hearing about new patterns. I am going to wash this hat and drink my coffee. Bye, friends.